You're having problems on your job. You're having problems with your finance. Well, God said he can't put nothing in your hand if you don't know how to take care of the little things. Amen. In my name, you want the world, but you don't know how to take care of the things that baby and God to give you the world. He said the earth is yours and all that they're in, all this belongs to you. Amen. He gave it all to you. It belongs to you. So don't be hating on people because they got their Mercedes, they got their nice house, they got the cars. But I'm telling you, don't go out and peddle the people for it. Don't fleece the people for it. Because the word of God declares to me, according to the book of Corinthians, he said, unless I build the house, it's built in vain. God's got to do the work. Your job is to do the same thing that Habakkuk did. Habakkuk cried about all that stuff about the rich people. Why it seemed like all the wicked people got it on? The word of God came to Habakkuk and stopped them in his track. Look, you need to write the vision on the wall. In other words, Habakkuk, stay in your lane. Do what I call you to do Amen. in the season which you in. As we look back over in the book of Romans, and I know I'm moving in the name of Jesus, and I declare the word of God that the power will move every time this man of God speaks, because I know it, I'm pipeline straight from the kingdom. He says right over in the verse 21, he says, but now the righteousness of God without the law, let's, let's look at that close, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and their prophets. Now, that's a strong word right there. I don't need the law to bring what God has given me to reality. See, uh, it, see, the Bible say, it, you know, it's a way that seems right to a man. See, men look at the proficiency of what the law says and what the provision of the law can give them. And then they want to say, God did it. See, God does supernatural stuff. He don't need the help of no man to do nothing. Am I in there anywhere? Now, you don't want to hear this because I'm trying to show you something. Just like a person who's walking through salvation and you keep wanting to lay your hands on them and tell them they say, but you ain't get the demons up out of them. You got to be able to bless them in such a way that you got to knock all the hell up out of them Amen. and bet them to understand and realize that God is really trying to get them because he gave them a revelatory work back in the book of Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before you was born, there was a gift in you and only God know the thoughts and the plans for you. He says good and not of evil. God is a manifesting God. God. And I'm telling you, man, the woman, God, he will declare a word in you in such a way that he, I mean, he will tear the roof off of every thought that you're thinking. Because he tells you over in the book of 2 Corinthians, I mean, 1 Corinthians, in that second chapter, for eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard. God said, I will mesmerize you beyond belief. Listen to me. You go over here in the 22nd verse of Romans 3 and, 20, and 22. Even the righteousness of God, uh, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, notice it, and to all and upon all them that believe it. It's a Mark 9 and 23. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all messed up. All you got to do is read it over there. Go back and look. Matter of fact, go back and look at Romans 3 and 9. And it'll tell you. This I got read before. Where then are we better than that? No one is better than nobody else. No. In no wise. For we have for we have before proven both Jews and Gentiles. We were proved to be both Jews and Gentiles. The woman of God just read back over in the book of Ephesians. We all have sin. We all once walked the course of the world. You weren't born, you weren't Jesus Christ born, unsinless. That's why you walk toward righteousness, yeah. that you may continue to sin. The Bible says, Should we continue to sin? Paul speaks about that. That grace abound? Certainly not. How can we live any longer now that we come over to Christ? I believe he speaks about that. If, 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 I want to get that right quick. I want to go back here to Mark because I want to see something here. I believe he speaks that we turn our Bibles here. We look at the book of Romans over there, Romans 6. And Romans 6 tells us, what should we say? Should we continue to say that grace abounds? God forbids, how should we? Now, he's talking about saved folk who committed, the, who gave the word. Of reconciliation to Christ is spoke according to Romans 10 8 9. They confessed it with their mouth and believed in their heart. Now, you not see, see, and I, I heard the bishop say this one time, and it was amazing how he said this woman to God. Now, I know I'm just all over the place. I got to get out of here. But but I remember the woman, I'm in the man of God, Bishop Raymond Johnson, down at, at, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at Living Faith Christian Center, said that, that God will remove mountains. That he was in a meeting, and he heard one of the young men say that God will remove mountains out of your life. You know, and, and, and really what God is simply saying is according to your faith. He may not move the mountain right away. Amen. He might move the mountain right away, but he will move the mountain. A rock at a time. It's according to your faith. A boulder at a time. Yeah. He never said he wasn't going to remove it. He didn't say how he's going to remove it. He said it's according to your faith that it'll be moved. Now, now I believe it's a 12, is it 12, 25? Go, 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 go ahead, woman of God. Romans 12 and 25? Yeah, 12 and 25. I mean, that's what we got on 12. Look at Romans 12 and 25. 
Now I'm going to go back over to the book of Mark because we're going to tag team this thing. we got to get up out of here <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Go over what you just, you just had something on 12 and 25, and I want to see what you got right there because I was looking at that. If that's the one you showed me, what, what, let, me let me see what you got right there. Is that 12 and 25? Okay. 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 Yeah. No, no. Let's, let's leave that. Let's leave that. And that's because we got to get out of here because we got to move. We, we out of here at 12, 15. It was only 30 minutes we can give you, but we're going to give you a punch in the name of Jesus. So we're going to move back over here to the area of the book of Mark. And I want you to look at this very close. I know Pastor Ellis is giving you a lot, but it's for you to get what God gives you. This, see, the reason I give you this because it gives you enough information that you can go home and study this all week. I give you enough, I give you enough work to choke you. If you study it right, I'm just going to give you two, three scriptures. I'm going to give you something that's going to last you all week long that when I see you on Bible study night, you'll be still full of the Holy Ghost. That's why I teach in series. I'm not going to give you tit for tat. I'm not going to give you a word here and then change it up next week. I want to give you longevity because when I stay on the track of something, I want to continue to talk about it that you get a full understanding of what we're speaking about here. Now, we're going to be back in the book of Mark on Tuesday. And we're going to be coming with this thing again. Now, now it says over there when it went over to the other side of the sea, and it said to the country of the gatherings, and I'm going to read through this a little bit. And when they come out of the ship immediately, notice what happened. The power of the spirit was right there. That whatever demonic force was on that land that was causing that young man to be in the condition he was in, now the Holy Ghost has showed up. It's the same thing with you. Once you come over to Christ and knowing that you have committed sins in your life and you come to repentance, the Holy Ghost will immediately come in and begin to heal you and restore you from whatever it is that's causing you to fall short. They say immediately that he met out of the tomb. See, sometimes we're in a dead situation. But he had no business being a man of God living among tombs. He let a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit. Am I relating to somebody up in here? In the name of Jesus, that we got some tombs in our life. That anything that need to be anything that dead need to be buried, Jesus said. That's what he said. Let the dead bury the dead. You need to move on. Mm -hmm. The Bible declares the key that 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 that, that even in the third verse that he had dwelled among the tombs, and no man could what actually uh uh bind him, not with even with chains. Because they had often binded him in fitters, not that they put handcuffs on the fitters, in chains. Shackles, in other words, and he had plucked them in the center. That was supernatural demonic strength. And, and that, that was some supernatural demonic strength that he had. That in the midst of that situation, that the devil can come and make you feel that you overwhelmed so much that it, you don't think you could come out of what you're in. But we, how many know the devil is a liar? That according to the word of God, according to the power of the spirit, that even as the demonic spirit begins to break the chains and preach, God just don't break your situation. He shatters it. For they'll never ever come back to you again. He broke the chains. But, but, but by the power of the Spirit, we read on down there, God will get ready to shatter his situation. That is, uh, it, it can't be put back together. He's going to cinder it in the name of Jesus. The Bible declares in the fifth verse, he said, always day and night in the mountains, in that demonic situation he was in, in the tombs crying out to himself, with, uh, uh, calling out to himself with stones, or cutting himself with stones. But Jesus, come on somebody, saw him afar off. Jesus will see your situation afar off. The Bible said, come to him who in heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God was ready to restorate you in the midst of your situation. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what you're going through. God will bring you out of whatever may. They said a man ran to Jesus and began to worship him. Such a prophetic word that when you know that something is going on in your life, and you don't know how to come out of the situation that you're in, God will give you rest right in the midst of your storm. The Bible said, be still and know that I'm God Amen. and I will give you deliverance or whatever. I'm about to preach up in here in the name of Jesus because I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this thing. I'm telling you, whatever the circumstances you are dealing with, whatever you may be going through in your life, whatever the kingdom knowledge has told you, whatever circumstance you deal with, whatever's going on in your marriage, whatever's going on with your kids, you got to be able to speak to the mountain before you and be able to declare and decree that God's about to move in the mountain in the time but it's according to your faith that you got to believe and declare that God is not a God that he shall lie and not a son of any man made spirit that he should have to be pinned. God has given a command to bless you and he will not reverse it the word of God goes on and declares it to you that even when he goes in the eighth verse he, so he said unto him come out of you come out of the man you unclean spirit that's the power of God giving you according to Romans uh, 4 and 17 you got the ability to call things that be not the let, let me move here we got to go woman of God come on come on in here amen amen <laughs> and when he um are we in the they're in the fifth verse right no we, we, we're going down in the fifth you can come on the fifth we're going to be stopping at the eighth but okay. it's just such power 
Amen. in the whole scripture. When you get some, not just the, the, the just the, uh, what we saw, the letter, but the spirit of it. This, this thing, I've been dealing with this thing for about a week now, just talking about it, just reading it over and over again. And God just studied pipeline and information. Amen. And, and in the fifth verse, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried out in a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he said, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send send them away out of the country. Now there there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into thy into the swine that we may enter into them and forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea there were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea you know when, when, we, when, we, when we let me cause we got we got to move here we got we got to go. We're supposed to be thirty minutes with you guys. I don't want to hold you too long. It's the same with our service. We don't hold you too long at Harvest and Light Church. We, we we move and we give you what you need. We know you're running a busy schedule, and uh, we're not forsaking the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit. But we got. But if you really move in the Spirit, it's going. I'm, I'm gonna give you what they call that thing five minute energy. You, I'm gonna give you something to swallow <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You're gonna drink that thing, energy, whatever they call that thing. What they call that thing with them claws on it, uh, what the blue cans, the bull boo or something. It, it charges you up. We're gonna give you a charge, and we're gonna give you something to hold you. But but when you look at this, and you said that even the demon said that we are many. I want you to look at consecrate yourself on the twelfth verse. Consecrate on the twelfth verse. He said all the who said all the devils. All the devils besought him. When you understand who the enemy is behind the scene, it wasn't the man, it was the things that was possessing the man. Amen. Mm. So you find out what a root is, you got to speak to the root. And you got to understand that even in the midst of you being a man and woman of God, God has given you power. When we look at the book of Genesis, God said, I've given you dominion, I've given you power. We talk about the process of how, uh, uh, was it Jacob and the angel? Or was it, well, I, I'm speaking about that. Well, I may be, now, now I want y'all to help me on this, but when, when, but, but, but when, but, but, but when, when, when we talk about the process of how God has gave us power in the earth, that, that we got more power in the earth with the angels than the devil himself. The dominion and the power has been given to us. And when the dominion and the power is given to us, even the enemy, the Bible declares in the creed, when they begin to give them the word over there in the book of uh, Acts, when the man of women God went out and they began to spread the word when the man of God, when I say man and women of God, because God given a revelatory word to everybody in the season which in, and when they went out, they said even the devil was subject unto us. Because God has given us the dominion. He given us the power down here on the earth. And with the power he's given us, we have been given the unction through the Holy Ghost to speak and declare and decree and call things in the events of what they are. That be not that they may be. So so when we looked at the 12th verse, and I really want you to say, see, all the devils, they laid at his feet. And we know about the process of legion. It's been a, uh, we talk about the legions of armies between four to 5,000 men. That means one man, which is Jesus Christ, got the power to conquer every devil that's in your life just on the word Amen. all you got to do is open it I mean 5,000 demons can you imagine that that's more demons than we read over in the book of Galatians all the lasciviousness all the hatred he can come, if, if you truly love the Lord all that stuff can come up out of you I, I, I look, look look we here and I know only got 30 minutes with you guys and I, I'm the woman guy gonna close us out here but I'm telling you th this is this is some revelation we're gonna be right back on this again in the area of uh, this coming Tuesday and I want you guys to join with us on Tuesday at 10 o'clock and sometimes y'all hear some of the verses of some of the uh, uh, messages I'll be, I'll be writing because Pastor Ellison has really been moving uh, working on this television program and pushing it forward and, 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 and I can you know sometimes I can feel in the spirit that there are already people who don't listen do not even like <laughs> the, what we're doing 
I can feel a, I can feel a negative over the enemy, but my job is to get on the field.